Hi, trust you're doing great. Today I'm going to take you back to the last century. Don't worry, we're not going to go into the black and white movie era. The year is 1998. Well, India was expecting a wonderful series, a test series here in India. It was a series between India and Australia. Australia, if you look at the 1990, um, the team of the 1990s, they were becoming the very best in the business. In 1995, they won against the West Indies in the West Indies. West Indies were, were a different side then, they were the invincibles at home. It was almost impossible to beat them, but under Mark Taylor's captaincy, they did achieve the impossible in 1995. And the next frontier for them was to win in India. It was not easy to win in India for any team from outside the subcontinent. Conditions were different, the pitches were low and slow and uh, playing the spinners uh, was, was a difficult uh, task for a lot of batsmen. Now Australia had the side, they had the batting, they had the bowling and they were always a very good fielding side. Now the series was also branded as a clash of two champions. A champion batsman taking on a champion bowler. Let me start with the bowler. The bowler was Shane Vaughan, arguably the best leg spinner to have played the game ever. Now, and there's no prizes for guessing who the champion batsman is, we are talking about the one and only Sachin Tendulkar. Nineteen ninety-eight, beginning of the nineteen ninety-eight, it was, and now Sachin had played nine years of international cricket by then, and he was regarded as one of the best batsmen, if not the best batsman in the world by then. He was the top scorer in the nineteen ninety-six World Cup, and here we were, India versus Australia, three Test match series. Now, what did Sachin do? Sachin knew that Shane Vaughan will have a few tricks up his sleeve. And countering Shane Vaughan was very important for him personally and also for his team. He went to Ravi Shastri, the current coach of Indian cricket team, and asked him, now I'm sure Shane will have some, some tricks up his sleeve. How do I tackle him? Now, Ravi Shastri is fairly tall. He said, look, whenever I played Shane Vaughan, remember Shane Vaughan's debut match in 92 in Sydney, Ravi Shastri had scored a double hundred. So Ravi said, since I'm very tall, I always had the defensive option. I could get to the pitch of the ball and smother the spin by playing defensively. Since you are much shorter than me, you don't have that option. You probably will have to take the attacking option. Now, Sachin took this advice, went to Chennai, the MR of Pace Academy, and took the help of Lakshman Shivarama Krishnan, who played for India, tremendous leg spinner, unfortunately had a very curtailed short career. He took Shiva's help. Both went to the Pace Academy, made a pitch. You probably get pitches of different nature, but they, they Taylor made a pitch, created a rough. You know rough? On day one of, of a test match, the, the wicket looks so nice. And after a while, you see the color changing because of the ball landing and also because of players running on that. It becomes a little too dark, a little brownish. That's what you call rough. And sometimes when the ball is bowled in the rough, it behaves in a different way. So Sachin actually created a rough outside the leg stub where he expected Shane Vaughan to ball to him and asked Shiva to ball there. Probably will have said, oh, Shiva keep bowling on uh, this particular length. Uh, I just want to try this shot. Anyway, coming back to the thrillers of voices that you can get on a cricket field has to be Sachin's, right? And now he tried every single shot that he could. He played so many shots, he tried everything possible to counter the spin, spinning ball out of the rough. And this he did for not one or two days, he did it for four days. And now came the big day. 6th of March, if my memory serves me well, it was the 6th of March, the first test match between the two countries in Chennai. India batted first and Sachin got out very cheaply for four runs in the first innings. And Australia ended up with the lead in the first innings and they dominated the 
test match till then. They had the noses slightly ahead, probably it was 60-40, 60 in favour of Australia and the, and the second innings. Sachin came to bat with the match in the balance. And now what we saw was one of the best innings of all time in Test Cricket. A chanceless 155 not out. Shane Wall tried everything that he could. He threw challenges after challenges but Sachin was too good. He played some shots which were, which were not seen before. It, it, it was not from the coaching manual but then only a genius could have done that. He countered the threat of Shane Vaughan, put India in the ascendancy. India won the match. The momentum was with India. They went to Kolkata for the second test match, won that convincingly and the series too. Now, there's something which actually got me excited thinking about it. It's not about the performance. Obviously, that is, that is very, very important. At, only a champion can perform with this kind of pressure against a champion bowler with, with, with the, the, the capacity crowd cheering for you. It's a pressure cooker situation for anybody and he, he really relished, he really loved playing there. But what enabled a champion to bring out a champion performance was a champion preparation. Two things stood out. One is, he went to Ravi Shastri for help. His ego didn't prevent him from doing that. He had already played nine years of international cricket. I know a lot of international cricketers personally who would be happy with nine years of of international cricket, they say that okay, we have played for nine years and our career is made, we are happy about our career. But not Sachin. Sachin was the best batsman in the world, but that ego didn't prevent him from taking help of Ravi Shastri. And then in the heat of Chennai, he toiled hard, he sweated it out with the help of Lakshman Shivaramakrishnan. He practiced for four days, looking at all permutation combination, all possible angles, and the entire base was covered in terms of preparation. And it was that preparation that allowed him to perform the way he did in the test match. And it's, it's part of India's cricketing folklore. I still remember that innings that he played in the month of March 1998. Now, preparation is a key. You take Rahul Dravid. Rahul Dravid, when he made his debut uh, for India, he was not probably the most talented batsman as compared to batsmen like Tendulkar, uh, Mohammad Azruddin or even a Saurav Ganguly, he didn't, he didn't quite have the natural flair or the talent. I'm not saying that he wasn't talented, but maybe not as talented as some of the other ones. But Rahul realized that he had an opportunity when India toured outside because Indian batsmen traditionally struggle in the seeming uh, pacey, bouncy conditions, especially in countries like South Africa and Australia. He knew if he could stand up and deliver in those conditions, he could be counted as one of the best batsmen. Now what he did, he created a pitch of 15 yards, no usually the pitch is 22 yards you know. He created a pitch of 15 yards and got his friends to throw tennis balls, wet tennis balls at him at high speed and he started playing the, the, the bounce because the, it, it tends to bounce a lot more than normal. And that's how he practiced which came handy when he played in Australia and uh, South Africa later. Preparation is a key, right? A lot of coaches keep saying that make the process of preparation supreme and results irrelevant. Because if the process of your preparation is supreme, results will be supreme. How many of you believe in luck? Uh, I believe that luck is a byproduct of your hard work. You create your own luck. The great golfer Gary Player once said, it's amazing to note the harder I practice, the luckier I got. This was something that came from a great golfer. And that's exactly what Bhagavad Gita also says. Do the duty to the best of your ability and forget about the results. Your performance depends on practice. Excellence in performance depends purely on excellence in preparation. So, how is your preparation? Now to start with, let's do this. Look at the last major event in your life. It could be an interview, it could be an exam, it could be singing a song somewhere, it could be a match, it could be anything. It could be making a presentation. How good was your preparation? Take a look at it very honestly and see how better you could have done your preparation. I'll see you in the next video with more. Take care.